Hi, everybody. My name is Phil Gervasi, uh, technical evangelist with Riverbed. So uh, despite my summery looking polo that I'm wearing, I'm actually uh, freezing right now, working out of my cold, unfinished basement in my house in upstate New York. I know a lot of people were sort of thrown into a similar situation this year. Uh, Rich alluded to that. Offices closed temporarily, maybe permanently. And really, I'm not talking about working from home per se, because I don't really work from home every day. Sometimes I work at my mother-in-law's house to help her out with something. And yeah, she's got miserably terrible internet. And sometimes the chaos is so bad in my house, mostly because of my kids, but a little bit because of me, that I have to go down the street to the local public library and I'll tether my, uh, to, my, to my cell phone because I don't trust their uh, free Wi-Fi and then work, for, work from there for a few hours. Sometimes um, it's really a struggle to try to get work done outside the office. I know for us in tech, so for all of us here, dealing with some of these things is, is not really completely new. I get that. But for the vast majority of the uh, information users, this is a new lifestyle, a new way to work, and therefore a new set of struggles for us, a new set of things for us to figure out. And I'm not talking about those funny distractions from our kids while we're on a Zoom call or, or our pets or the random lawnmower that's buzzing outside of our window. I'm talking about the struggle to get peak application performance wherever we are, no matter what we're plugging into. So what we're going to do now is it's a, it's a pretty quick, very high level overview of Riverbed's application acceleration portfolio. So back when we were all sitting in branch offices, we at least had the benefit of all that technology on the back end. We had QoS or we have QoS on our network gear, um, MPLS with strict SLAs, high bandwidth commercial grade internet links, direct connections to cloud providers, and of course, WAN op appliances. But now our applications need to still work great, just as good as they do at the office, no matter where we are. So that means a home on the road, some hotel somewhere. Uh, Brandon, who you just met, he likes to join meetings from his camper out in the desert, apparently. It's ridiculous. And I wish I had a picture I could show you. Um, so how do we do that when we're not at the office behind all that network gear? So what application acceleration actually does, if I'm going to frame this uh, in, a, in a problem solution kind of way, is solve the problems caused by using low bandwidth broadband, DSL, uh, uh, satellite, LTE, and so on, typical connectivity outside of the office. And sometimes even the issues we still have, even when we have decent connectivity. People like me working from unfinished basements, no SLAs, no QoS, no MPLS, no direct connections, just mediocre quality, consumer grade internet. The, uh, the quote on the bottom of your screen there, if you could see it uh, from ESG, it sums it up pretty well, I think. 70% of workers expect to be productive from anywhere, at the office, home, or while traveling. So before I get any deeper, I do wanna mention WAN optimization, something that you, you might be already familiar with. And this is because WAN op and application acceleration are used together in our solution. They're complementary. So Riverbed's probably best known for WAN optimization. And the basic idea of WAN op is to reduce bandwidth utilization on your WAN links. Actually, it's to uh, reduce the number of packets going over the wire. And the result of that is that we have more bandwidth available to use for our applications. And then we get uh, you know, big increases to efficiency and overall performance. So for us, this is mature, widely deployed technology. So what we have is a bookended solution of a steelhead WAN optimization appliance deployed in a branch office. And we have a steelhead appliance deployed in our data center. So we have both, uh, both sides of the conversation and we get better performance. Uh, we reduce the, the cost of running the network so it becomes lower. We ensure those, uh, that those important applications, uh, they work the way that they should. We're very much aware that the whole point of all this, all this gear and all this technology is to deliver applications to end users in such a way that those applications are usable and people can get their work done. So at Riverhead, we like to say any app, any user, any network, and, and it really is true. So application acceleration is all about ensuring an application uh, works great, whether that application is served out of an on-prem data center, a public cloud like Azure AWS, 
or being consumed as a SaaS application and, and regardless of where the client is. So by design, application acceleration does carry with it some of those benefits that I mentioned about WANOP. That's still a part of the, the equation here, even at the client level. But it also, and this is really key, it also overcomes latency issues, which is really important. So application acceleration operates more at the TCP and application level than it does at the network level. I know some of you here, and I think you know that I've been a network engineer for many years. So I get the idea to just throw more bandwidth at the problem. But more bandwidth doesn't really fix latency issues, and it doesn't address the issue of chatty applications. So in a little bit, John, Gwen, and Vince will be going much deeper into all of that. And also, we can't really just throw more bandwidth at the problem anyway, because an end user today, in 2000, at the very end of 2020, is often on a network that the IT department doesn't control. So I personally, maybe you do, but I personally don't carry a portable 10 gig direct connect to AWS in my laptop bag. That would be awesome. And I'm sure Brandon uh, won't let me expense a private MPLS circuit from my house to all of Riverbed's resources. That's my guess. So I want you to think about application acceleration as the overall technology. But we do separate it out into three categories based on what we're trying to do. So if you look on your screen here, you can see uh, here in this graphic that we have three cloud icons on the right side representing the far end of a stream. So in other words, um, where the application is hosted out of. We have our traditional on-premises apps out of our own private data centers. We have applications served out of public cloud. And we have SaaS apps like Office 365, Salesforce, whatever. Now, the far end is what changes. Um, and that's why under that heading of application acceleration, we sort of have these three sub uh, subcategories that I'm going to walk through with you. Now, before we do that, before we get into that, I do want to start with the client side. That's what we have on the left side of the screen. So rather than deploy a steelhead, uh, a steelhead appliance in your house, what, we're, what we've done is develop lightweight software that lives right on your computer, right on your MacBook or your Windows PC. And it's going to take the place of a branch steelhead. And it's therefore, you know, no matter what, it's going to be with you and no matter what kind of internet connection you have. We call it the client accelerator. And if you're familiar with Riverbed already, you may remember it as the steelhead uh, mobile client, something that we first developed a few years ago. So I want to look at the client accelerator uh, specifically a little bit more closely now. The client accelerator is functionally almost identical to a branch steelhead. It's, uh, it's optimized to be used on a single computer, so it's not exactly identical, but functionally it does the same thing. There's a couple of differences. So here on the left of the screen, we have two examples of end users using the client accelerator agent installed on their machines. And on the bottom left there is a traditional branch, which you can see here, but still has a, a steelhead in place. So the agent software itself that sits on your machine, it's going to be pretty lightweight using a few hundred megs of local memory. And under normal circumstances, maybe 1% of local CPU. I mean, it really depends on what you're doing. And the client accelerator itself, that's going to be managed by the IT department by the client accelerator controller, which is just a VM that you can deploy on-prem or in the cloud. So here in this graphic, uh, you can see it in the blue in that top left of our data center bubble. So an IT department can manage the acceleration policies for all of its endpoints from one place. So the way it works, we create application acceleration policies in the controller that tell the client accelerator agent what to do with certain application traffic. The policies look kind of like firewall rules in a way, because, uh, well, we might be using source and destination IPs, um, ports, standard five tuple. And that's you know, one way that we identify applications. So the client accelerator agent, that local software, which is on the laptop, it's you know, the image all the way on the left, it's going to call home to the controller after getting installed, and it's going to verify its license. Then it pulls down its policy, and then it's going to work pretty much on its own to make decisions about how to treat application traffic on the computer. So you're going to see some of those benefits from WANOP. That's still very much a, a part of what we do. It's kind of the foundation of what we do. But since you have that local piece of software running right on the computer, you could do some other things as well to accelerate application traffic. So things like URL filtering, um, we correlate local processes with network activity. And we do that so we can apply a policy to specific application traffic. We optimize SSL connections. And because we're sitting right on the end device, um, we get a ton of visibility into both sides of the conversation. Another thing that Rich alluded to earlier. So there are huge visibility gains uh, that Brandon's going to talk about in a little bit. So now the other end. 
the remote end, uh, with, with respect to the end user, is going to be a physical or a virtual steelhead appliance sitting in your data center. It uh, could be a virtual steelhead uh, in Azure or AWS. And for SaaS apps, what we do is offer the far end steelhead appliance, uh, or rather the steelhead functionality, as a service as part of our SaaS acceleration solution, which uh, we're, I'm going to get into in a little bit. So it really depends on how and where you deploy that far end steelhead. So I want to take a look at these three areas, which at Riverbed we call client acceleration, cloud acceleration, and SaaS acceleration. So client acceleration is really the term that we use to describe what's happening on the client. Uh, we're not actually accelerating the client, we're accelerating applications. So in this graphic, I have a connection between an end user working from somewhere, from home, an airport, whatever, and they're connecting to company apps in a traditional on-prem data center. And yes, they still do exist. So that agent running on the computer will communicate with the steelhead in the data center, and then it'll, it'll, uh, it'll use a variety of methods to reduce bandwidth uh, consumption on that local link. Now, what it's also going to do is identify applications running on that link and apply whatever application acceleration policies that it got from the controller. Now, in the upper right of your screen there is a, it's a screenshot of an agent running on my machine just to give you a sense of what it looks like. Now, Cloud Accelerator is really a different deployment of the same solution. In this case, we have our end users with a client accelerator agent right on their computer uh, and that talks to a virtual steelhead deployed in Azure or AWS or Oracle. You still control both ends uh, and you still have that book-ended solution. So even for public hosted applications, we can still dramatically improve performance. SaaS Accelerator is the same technology under the hood, but because we don't own those SaaS applications, we do have to approach it a little bit differently. So first, SaaS Accelerator is a riverbed managed service. Um, the far end in this case is a service we manage for our customers. You can see in that little, that little orange circle in the upper right there with the R in it, that's, uh, that's what represents our SaaS Accelerator service, which we host in Azure. So we, Riverbed, are responsible for deployment and backend management of the service instances. So our customers don't have any access to them. And honestly, they don't really, they don't really need much access to it anyway. And over on the right side of the screen, I have a graphic that shows kind of a close-up of what, looks, what it looks like in Azure. Remember, our, our steelhead service, uh, the, the cluster resides in Azure. And we use an Azure load balancer to front end the, the steelhead cluster. And since we're already in Azure, in the Microsoft Cloud, traffic going to Office 365 and other Microsoft uh, applications is gonna stay within Microsoft's network. And traffic destined to other uh, providers will exit the Microsoft network and then route via the internet. So what you want to accelerate and how, what, what application, that's all going to be uh, completely configurable and uh, managed by our SaaS Accelerator Manager, which is also hosted by Riverbed. So from a high level, and I'm going to stay pretty high level here, how does this work? Remember that WANOP is all about reducing congestion on the network connection. We want to reduce the number of packets that go over the wire. An application traffic, as application traffic goes back and forth between the client and the remote server, what we could do is pick out unnecessary packets that really, once the stream is established, we don't really need to send them anymore. So we look for frequently accessed data that we can cache locally and therefore access that way rather than make that request from the server again. So that reduces uh, uh, network congestion. We use that using byte level data deduplication and data referencing. So, caching chunks of data and tagging them with markers so, so that can be looked up when the client makes a request for it. Oh, this is heavy. This is a complete works. This is the complete works of William Shakespeare. You can see that in your screen there. It's a big book. I've had it since college, that thick. Imagine sending this over the network back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now, I do get technically, this doesn't actually turn out to be a lot of data in 2020. But imagine I could cache locally all the commonly used words and phrases in this book so that they didn't have to be sent over and over and over again. It's not a perfect example because I think I can download this in like 45 seconds today. But it does mean this book goes from something like this to something a fraction of its size. So we can reduce the actual number of packets we send back and forth a lot. I mean a lot, like 99% reduction. So that's one part of the solution, being smart 
with what we send across the network, even from a client computer. But we also need to deal with latency issues, which I alluded to earlier. Notice uh, on the screen, I have a couple of arrows between the two boxes, WAN up and um, uh, apl application acceleration. I put those there to sort of signal how these two things, WAN up and application acceleration, really work together and uh, overlap a little bit as well. So on the right, we address latency issues by regulating window sizing, which ultimately provides a type of TCP flow control. So remember that uh, the goal here is trying to make that transfer more efficient. We'll also repackage TCP payloads and use connection pooling, which is another more efficient way to transfer data. And some of the tests that I've seen show up to 98% reduction in round trips. That's the back and forth uh, between a client and a server that a lot of it's unnecessary and is therefore a cause for latency or cause of latency. And of course, we can correlate specific application processes with local network activity. So I want you to leave this, uh, this very short, high level overview today uh, with the understanding that application acceleration is an ecosystem of components to solve the very real problem of poor application performance due to mediocre, sometimes outright bad quality internet connections when we're not in the office. Um, I don't foresee deploying high bandwidth, low latency, SLA wrapped MPLS links to everyone's house or to every coffee shop. Those are networks we don't control anyway, and obviously that's not the solution. So that's why I'm so excited about how Riverbed has taken something that we're already really good at and brought it right down to the computer that's sitting in front of you and then out to the cloud, whether that's your own cloud environment, public cloud, or SaaS providers. So next, Brandon's going to give you a similar overview of our visibility portfolio. And as you're listening to his, as you're listening to his presentation, you're going to see how all of these things fit together. These are all uh, complementary technologies to each other. Yeah, we can look at each separately, of course, but they really do all fit together. So thanks very much. Before you go on, I got a question. Yeah. Um, how does this how does this compare to the SD WAN solutions that are available on the market today? To the SD WAN solutions? Yes. Well, this is this is addressing specifically the application traffic going over, uh, you know, between you and wherever wherever your resources are located. So, you know, I know some SD WAN solutions are going to have some of those components of WAN optimization built into them. What we do is we're going to focus on. Um, improving that, that specific application performance the best that we can. Um, and so in some senses, and, and remember it's client-based, not branch office-based. So in some senses, you're going to get some of those benefits like being able to, um, you know, in whatever, running on LTE, which is traditionally very high latency, still, uh, you know, observe some of those benefits. But you're not going to have like the multiple link failover and fault tolerance like you might have with an SD-WAN with seven links in it and path probing and, and sending, you know, different things like that. So there are some, some you know, significant differences to how you're going to apply that technology. So if I throw an SD-WAN box, you know, in a branch office, um, you know, I can have multiple internet connections, I can load balance, I can, uh, you know, use whatever methods I can to probe the jitter and loss and latency. So you're going to see some overlap there for sure. This is client based and it's specifically to the application that's what we're looking at now again because we're built on WAN optimization that's where you do see some of that overlap um, and, and in my experience just as a network engineer a lot of the WAN optimization technology that's built into a lot of SD-WAN solutions is like it's just barely scratching the surface in my opinion <laughs>